Welcome to another episode of the Emetophobia Free Podcast. Today we're joined by the lovely Fiona Brown, who is one of our longest serving Thrive Coaches. And she's here today to talk all about taking emetophobes through the program, the coaching program in general, what it looks and feels like to go through it, and to share her experience of working with emetophobia sufferers. So hello, Fiona. Hello, Michelle. Nice <laughs> How to, are nice you? Nice to be here, finally. Yes, absolutely. I'm great. Thank you. Brilliant. Lovely. So I wonder if, Fiona, you could tell us a little bit about yourself before we start. Um, how long have you been, I say, longer standing, so how long have you been coaching? Um, well, I've always had a psychological background. So I kind of met Rob kind of just before kind of Thrive was Thrive, really, what it what it is now. So um, and when I hit that, I just saw this most this brilliant thing mm -hmm. that I just saw would change the psychological landscape. So I've been I sat on this couch for quite a long time. Yeah. sorting myself out as well um yeah. and uh yeah so I've been doing it for about sort of 15 plus years now I've Perfect. probably taken I don't know maybe a thousand people through or something like that by now so I've met yeah. all kinds of different people emetophobes other people with other conditions people wanting to optimize their mental health yep. but I love working with the emetophobes because yes. um they're really good fun and they're always because of that lovely broody thinking style they're always very creative and interesting <laughs> <laughs> yes they are <laughs> um so do you want to talk through then what it looks like start to finish of working with a coach so people watching this podcast I would presume are on the fence they wanted to learn a little bit more about the coaching program what it looks and feels like so from the minute they reach out to yourself or another coach what happens what does it look like from your perspective yeah, no, that's a, excuse me. <coughs> um, that's a good question. Um, the first point is actually choosing a coach. So Absolutely. we've obviously got the website. Um, you can either have a coach selected for you or you yeah. can look down the list, see who you want to want to speak to maybe and, and send an email to a couple of them who will always hopefully uh, respond back within 24 hours. Yep. So as soon as we kind of get that message, we kind of set up a, a meeting, hopefully as soon as possible, because if anybody's, you know, made the effort to, um, to to approach us. You want to make sure that you, you get back to them because it takes a little bit of courage to, Does. you know, approach somebody new. So yeah. we have a free consultation initially, and that is yeah. a free sort of half an hour, 45 minutes. I sometimes can talk a little bit, so sometimes it's 45 minutes. <laughs> um, but I take that time um, to really sort of help. If I only got 45, if they're on the fence or they're sort of wanting a little bit of an idea about going through the coach, you can get a lot of information and a lot of um, understanding about how the coaching program works. They can get to know you. They can actually sort of work out whether they could stand to spend an hour a week with you or whatever <laughs> yeah. it's going to be, which would be nice. Um, but we sort of, you know, very carefully take them through the sort of the journey through Thrive yes. and how perhaps some intervention they've had in the past that hasn't worked or they haven't got what they want out of it, why it is different. And what and what the difference is is actually having somebody there support you. Yes. Sometimes it's with people who have necessarily uh, studied the manual themselves before. Other yes. times it's going to be people that are you know have, have never have just come across the program. So yes. it's getting a relationship across. It's making them understand what the next few weeks would look like if they jumped on the course, and hopefully yes. by the end of the IC be really enthused and and, and, and excited about it. But also know much more before they leave that first session or that first meeting yes. about the program, but also a little bit about mental health. If I never see them again, I want them to go away with yes. something. It's, yes. It's, yes. It's, it's very important, I think. So yes, absolutely. That's the first sort of um, uh, meeting. Yeah. And then hopefully they'll sign up um, and we get going. I always get them to study a little bit of the program before within the manual. Make yeah. sure, so if it's somebody that's not done it before, we get them to take their TQ report and, yeah. you know, we have that. Then we get them to, you know, purchase the manual and, and get everything in place and actually yes. sort of start studying the first kind of three chapters in advance of that. Yeah. And then for the actual sessions is about six to eight sessions and they come in at the beginning with me anyway, it's quite heavily sort of coaching and teaching. We want yes. to make sure that they're getting the concepts, people that have gone before, we want to make sure that they applying and understanding what it means to their belief systems and things like that. People that are, uh, have come and they're sort of, they haven't read the manual before. It's a lot of information, especially in the first sort yeah. of 
half of it, half of the manual. We streamed it down with the new with the new manual now, but um, it's a lot of information to take in. So people study in their own ways. Absolutely. Some people like to you know they're really into the the reading. They really understand the the reading, and they don't do much with the videos. So yes. you know, and some people sort of really like the videos and like to be taught in the sessions. So what we'll do as coaches is we will we will work out together, well, you know, what fits you about? Do you like coming into the sessions and really talking about your experiences with your thinking this week and how, yeah. you know, we can help you see through your lenses and point stuff out and maybe do a little bit of gentle challenging um, and, and, and helpful that way. And sometimes yes. we use the coaches at the beginning for other people who really, really like to, to, to get learning in, in a more practical yes. kind of way. But each Absolutely. different way of doing it, everybody gets the same quality we want people to leave each session or progress through the course so we don't let anybody move on yep. before they've absolutely got something yes and that's absolutely. a you know that's a, a really important part of it because the last thing you want to do is get all the way to the end of the manual and if you've missed some big block at the beginning you're yes. going to find it really difficult to thrive absolutely you know yeah and the absolutely. other thing we do I think within going through with the coach is we predominantly focus on learning to thrive which I know sounds a little bit silly but you know everybody every emetophobe I understand you know my own um, issues and whatever in the past I understand how pervasive and yeah. difficult it is to live with emetophobia so we're never not mindful of that but it really is the psychological foundations the building the skills getting people to just steer away from being so focused on I just don't want to have a metaphobia anymore yeah. because if we can help you you know and that's us supporting you and, and helping you to be a little bit patient and helping you to go through the program in the way that's best for you so by the end of it not only have you got the insights that you need that you're looking at, at thriving every part of your life because yes. that's going to help you you know overcome the challenges of overcoming a metaphobia itself yes. we need you to be working on the metaphobia but we also yeah. need to be learning to thrive absolutely and you know and every coach I think every coach has every coach is different every client is unique yeah. so some of my clients the way they learn I I, I like I think they're they have can we do sort of three weeks yeah and I send them away with a few things to do and whatever and make give them a couple of weeks to kind of catch up on a bit of reading yeah. Yeah. a bit of studying other people like to have their hands held every yes. week and they like the check-in and they like the accountability yep yeah. yeah. And and we'll do it that way. So we will work to, yes, you know, absolutely. Our, uh, our clients. Yes, and 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 we see them progress. And sometimes they don't recognise it themselves. So it's quite good yes. for us to kind of go through the program and take them on. Sometimes they're a little bit resistant of moving on. When actually, you've absolutely got that. There's nothing yes. more complicated about it. You know, let's absolutely. go learn this new, you know, this new area of the course that's going to be really really good for for you know for your thinking in other areas. So yes. I think it's a. I think it generally, my feedback anyway is that it's positive. <laughs> Absolutely. One of my fa just touching on that. One of my favourite sessions is is the last session that I have with people because I always make notes on that very first session when they're sharing their limiting beliefs and how how their emetophobia is impacting their their lives. I'm sneakily I'm listening. And I'm sneakily making notes because then at that final session I always go back. Right. Okay. So we're going to go back to session one. This is what you said, and most of the time they go. Did I? <laughs> Was I? Did I say that? Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Those were your actual words. I, I verbatim write them down so that they can't deny the progress that they've made. No. You know, crikey, I can see it. And it's it's when you're working so hard at overcoming a metaphobia, I remember it very vividly, head down, nose to the grind almost every day, going for it, going for it, stepping outside that comfort zone, getting there. And it's only when you take a breath, stand up, look back, that you go, crikey, yeah. look how far I've come. You don't recognize it at the time. And our job as coaches is to help you see that because that's yeah. real motivation to keep you going. Yeah. Now, once we've done the, the six to eight sessions, we then have a break uh, where the client then goes away and applies all of these things in even more detail. And then they come back and have a backup session. Yeah. So, Definitely. and that's, yeah, absolutely. And that's when you redo your TQ report um, and we then celebrate all your success even more so at that point and iron out any little wrinkles and crinkles and then they're on the way. So that's answered that side of things, which is wonderful. I wonder if you've hinted at it and I think your answer will be the same as mine. The average emetophobe, is there such thing? Do, do people go through it in an average kind of way or 
is it in your experience something very unique to the individual um I think a bit of both which is is that sitting <laughs> sitting on the fence answer uh, <laughs> not you know because actually every everybody is unique and I've had you know mm. I've had people from all over the world and I've had yep. um people with comorbid things like not just having a metaphobia with other yeah. things going on as yep. well so yes we have to take everybody as you know as they you know, as they present yeah. to us and help them in the best yeah. way that we can. Absolutely. Um, the average amount of, there is a, they go through in, a, in the same kind of predictable route. Yep. Getting them sometimes to recognize that is, yes. uh, is sometimes a challenge because they like, you know, the perfectionism means they're like, well, I haven't cured cancer today. So, yes. yeah, absolutely. you know, I, I didn't, I, made, I said, yeah, but you, you got to the restaurant, you sat down, you, you, yeah. you, you did this, your, 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 your composure is completely different. Your face, even seeing some of them after sort of two to three weeks absolutely. where their face is looking yes. much yes. more relaxed and stuff yes. like that. But yeah. the average emetophobe will... There is no way of going through a program, listening to, re- reading a bit of the manual or listening to me on a, a, as a coach that you're going to overcome your emetophobia nope. like that. That's just not, that's just not how it happens. So nope. yes, people go through in the same way. It's a gradual process. It's a, it's a building of a jigsaw puzzle. And as yes. a jigsaw puzzle, you get more pieces come in, things solidify and you get to a point in time where actually I had a, a text actually on, on Sunday from an ex-client going, I've just realised I'm not an emetophobe anymore. <laughs> she said because she'd, she'd done something and then she was like, hang on, her own belief system turned around to be like, hang on, hang on. I can't have emetophobia because I can cope with this. Why am I still Absolutely. working in that? And those really kind of big insights, yeah. everyone goes through. They kind of even be tottering around feeling like nothing's happening for a couple of weeks and then yeah. they'll suddenly get a big insight. And yeah. our job as coaches is to either point things out or reinforce and support yes. And I will hold your doubt until yes. you until you get there. Because yeah, I think one thing the coaches are, we are, we are so passionate about the programme, mm. you know, that we kind of know. And I know from my background before, you know, I'm not saying coaching is easy, but it's 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 a brilliant thing because you can, I can I can sit at the beginning of seeing a client and I absolutely know, even if they don't know, I'm solid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yep. I know that you're going to get from A to, a to B. Yep. You know, if you put this effort in, it's like an ABC. Yep. You know, you learn your ABCs, you're going to get to the end of the road. And, yep. and so, uh, yes and no, they're all unique, but there is a very predictable route through the program. Fabulous. I totally agree with that. Now, different question, slightly different angle. As you mentioned, people can choose to. Um, look through the coaches themselves and choose the coach they want to work with, mm-hmm. or they can just ask HQ to match them and pair them with a suitable coach. Because when they click that button that says see a coach, they will answer some questions, um, which HQ will then get some information from them to pair them with somebody that yeah. is going to work with them really nicely. A lot of people, a lot of metaphobes like to work with coaches who have also had a metaphobia. And as you know, a number of our coaches have had a metaphobia and overcome it themselves. Mm-hmm. We want to talk a little bit today about your opinion um, and my own on why it doesn't actually matter whether you go through with a coach who's had a metaphobia themselves or not. Because we have a variety of coaches with a variety of different symptoms that they've overcome using Thrive. Mm-hmm. Why does it not matter that your coach has had a metaphobia in the past or not? I would say it's the point about really as a you know whether you're going through a coach or whether you're not going through the coach yeah. one of the main things is is teaching yourself to thrive so it's 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 actually focusing it in that direction yes I think sometimes um the the the, the focus which I completely understand yeah. I think sometimes the focus on you know the coach has been through a metaphobia and therefore I've got to go through a coach has become a, a th- that's been through with a metaphobia I understand that um is actually taking away a little bit from what you actually need to do. It's reinforcing maybe a belief system that uh, isn't that helpful. Having said that, I think, you know, and we've got so many new and brilliant coaches now, um, I don't think it matters who you go through with as long as you build a relationship with them. And, you know, I I don't know from, from my perspective when I have an IC, the, the initial consultation one of the biggest things for me is to make sure is to make sure that that person's comfortable with me absolutely so yeah. you know you can 
you know, you can go down and find a coach and say, right, okay, you know what, Fiona looks nice, Michelle looks nice, so-and-so looks nice, and yeah. have a chat with all of us, you know. Yes, there's, absolutely. There's, there's absolutely no problem with doing that. Yeah. Our job is to make sure that that, that, that you get the, the course that you need with the absolutely. person that you need. Absolutely. And I think it's a, you made the good point there that I want to back up, that when you're overcoming a metaphobia, and I was very guilty of this, I didn't care. When you were saying, you know, you got to learn to thrive in all areas of your life, I thought, nope, they're all fine. I'm not bothered, not interested, don't care, want to get over my emetophobia. Very much black and white, very much in that that vein of thinking. So I totally understand why people think that and why they do want to go through with a coach of emetophobia. But if I say that I went through Thrive with a non emetophobia coach. Oh, you did? I did. So the lady yeah. that took me through didn't have a metaphobia, had never had a metaphobia herself, and I overcame it with her her guidance. It's nothing to do with the coach's background. The coach is there for you and your experience. Mm-hmm. And the program is the program. So the steps you take are going to be the same, regardless of the coach you go through with. So to back up your point, go with the person that you have that rapport with that you feel comfortable talking to, um, regardless mm-hmm. of whether they've had a metaphobia or not. It's not yeah. necessary. Yeah, exactly. And we all work online as well now. There are some yeah. coaches that, that, that you know, so if you if yes. you fancy face-to-face and you can find somebody in your local environment, yeah. then um, absolutely brilliant. But also you can choose, you know, uh, you can choose somebody that's outside of your time zone if you like. Absolutely, yeah. You know? Yes, and we both work with people in all sorts yeah. of time zones, don't we? <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. No problem at all. Great. So the question then I suppose, is the root of all of this. If you're on the fence about going through the coaching program, the alternative is to do the manual yourself and to do the program at home by yourself. You can absolutely, and I want to hammer this point home, which seems like I'm doing us both out of a job, right? But I'm not. (laughs) You can actually get through, get over emetophobia 100% without seeing a coach. It's not necessary. I get a lot of questions about that on online and on social, the social platforms is, do I need to see a coach to overcome it? The flat answer is no. No, you don't. You do not need to see a coach. You can do this yourself. There's loads of testimonials of people who have gone through themselves. Uh, There's a lovely lady called Grace who um, gave us a testimonial a few months ago. She'd never seen a coach. Oh, yes. Um, Mary, the lovely, how old is she now? 92, 91? I can't remember. She's she's getting up there. (laughs) She's getting up there. She went through it without a coach. She did it herself. One of our coaches, actually, Bree, over in Australia, she went through it without a coach. So you absolutely can do this yourself with the manual. Now, with saying that, there are some benefits to seeing a coach. I, I went through it with a coach and I see the benefits to it. Do you want to share from your perspective what the benefits of seeing a coach are? Yeah, absolutely. I'd also say, I'd also add to that by saying yeah. that if we met somebody for an IC, and I have done this um, in the past, that if they, mm-hmm. if I don't feel that they need to see a coach, yes, yes, I would tell them, I would, you know, yeah. I always give them the option. I actually would encourage them because it's quite internal if you think about it. Yes, it really is. Absolutely. You know, I've so done if the they same. don't need yeah. to see a coach, they just may be in a big blip or yes. or something. Yes. I'd say, look, you know, let's, you know, I'd spend that half an hour, you know, helping out the blip and Getting then the say, blip. right, yeah. this, this is what you need to do. But, you know, there is benefits to seeing a coach, I think. Yes. You know, yes. A, it's the support. It's 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 more predictable yes, because if you think is. about it, somebody um, doing the program is 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 looking through their lenses. Yes. So, yes. you know, it's very much easier for me if I, you know, if, if we were, if you needed a session for anything, it's very much easier for me to see what you're doing in your thinking sometimes Absolutely. than it is for you to, to see what you're doing in your thinking. So yep. the, the, the idea of the support it becomes very predictable because you've got someone to check in on week by yes. week and yes. they're checking that you are, you know, picking up all the insights and you are mm-hmm. doing the homework and you are doing uh, doing the exercises and the actions. And if not, if there's any resistance to something, which yeah. which a person may not pick up themselves or may dismiss in some sort of way, we're quite yes. good at coming in and yes. sort of going, Absolutely. okay, well, I can see from my perspective this and it yes. can give you a completely different yes. um, uh, a way of going through the programme. It is checking in once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also I think I think another thing about it is emetophobia has been such a secret, you know, we call it the secret phobia for a reason. It's yeah. a really big thing overcoming emetophobia. It's it like it's yes. like it's like your Everest in life or your your, yeah. your biggest marathon you've ever 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 run. And yes. nobody can see it because it's not like a broken leg. No. Yes. So 
you know, they're doing this amazing, uh, amazing things with their thinking and they're completely changing, not their personality, but the way yep. that they approach life and the way that they feel and 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 and, and really becoming themselves in a kind of way. Yeah. yeah. And it's quite nice to share that with somebody. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, yes. you know, you know, and I did, you know, I, I did it with, I did it with, well, I did it with Rob, but yeah. Um, which is positives and negatives, <laughs> um, you know. But it was really good to come in those weeks because every yeah. sort of week that we, we we came and we chatted and we reinforced things. Yes. Um, yeah. You get to the end of it and you realise actually just how much you've got out of, mm. you know, the space of an hour, an hour and ten minutes, an hour and fifteen minutes, whatever it's going to be a week. Yeah. Um, you go away feeling, I think, reinforced validated reinforced motivated yes, yes definitely um, you've got things that you can't tell anybody else mm -hmm. not not you know but you've got things that you can't tell anyone else about things that you, you know some little thing that you've done that done, done this week that to yes. you is just like climbing Enormous, Everest yeah. something else is like you know so what if you sat in the middle of the seat of a cinema or yes. you ate yeah. chicken or you yes. did whatever yeah. it's 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 not it's not an issue they look at you a little bit like you're mad but oh yeah. here we go <laughs> Oh my God, wow. that's just the most incredible <laughs> yes. thing that you've done. And yes. not only you did it, you know how you did it. Yes. Because yes. sometimes people do also come and they do all these things and don't process it so well. So yep. I think we've 100%. got a really good, um, I think it's really good to, to, to help you start processing yes, what you're brilliant. learning and your experience, which has always been done in a different way for all of your life. Yes. So yes. It's, it's encouragement. I think it makes the process easier, quicker. And more predictable, I think. Absolutely. And hopefully yes. they have some fun on the way because most Absolutely. of the coaches are good fun. They are good fun. <laughs> yeah, they are. They really are. And the sessions, and that, and that's a, a really uh, strange thing to get your head around if you've never done Thrive, that if you've been through other traditional therapies, if you will, I'm, I'm speaking totally from my own experience here, some of the sessions are really draining and really hard work, particularly I did EMDR, just naming that, mm. for myself, really quite hard to get through and I came out feeling drained yeah. um, but coming out of a Thrive session you feel empowered you feel motivated it's a completely different experience um, and it's it's very much um, like we talked about the relationship a lot you, you talk with somebody who really understands who really understands your thinking yeah. can see things from a different perspective the amount of times that I've had the conversation with somebody about the way they're viewing something in their life. And I'll go, well, what about this? And just switching it and they go, I've never thought about it like that. Because mm. it's so difficult to see from your own perspective sometimes yeah, the things exactly. you've always seen in a certain way. Also adds the fact that you went through it with Rob, it adds to weight to the argument that you don't need to see in a metaphobia coach to overcome this thing because Rob, who created the program in the first place, is not an emetophobe and has never been an emetophobe. So that adds weight to that argument. Yeah, it does. I think that the, the final thing I would say about the, the benefits of going through with a coach, me particularly, I was a teacher at the time and that's quite a, an intense job during term time, lovely holidays, but in, intense in term time. And I was going back to school in the, in the summer holidays. I'd read the manual before and I was going back to school and I just thought, I need somebody there every week or I want somebody there every week to keep me mm. accountable so that I'll do basically do my homework because I know I've got that <laughs> check in with them because I know myself and I just throw myself into work and, and direct yeah. all my attention over there because my wonderful obsessive thinking style would lend it beautifully to teaching and I needed that accountability and someone to just go have you done this and why not and if you haven't this is what you need to be doing and, and keep me in line so that's that's another job of yeah. a coach as well yeah definitely it's lovely and the final thing to to touch on is the payment side of things because again a lot of times they say, well, I'd love to see a coach but I can't afford it. Um, so just to put that into perspective, really, because the you know the coaching program starts at eight nine five as it says on the website, but every coach charges slightly differently. And why, you know, that's less as as we've talked about before. It's less than the cost of an iPhone. Is it eight nine five? Yeah. And what you're talking about is overcoming that thing that rules your life, that thing that's day in, day out, draining you and and making you decide certain things in your life. And you, your decisions are all based around, am I going to get sick today or not? And it's all mm -hmm. consuming. It's, it's all pervasive. But it's in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. And you can get over that 
and learn to thrive in every other aspect of life for less than the cost of an iPhone or for the cost of a nice holiday somewhere. Nice for less holiday than a nice holiday. Something like that, yeah. And, 100%. you know, and, and lots of people have, have uh, and I get it, you know, you, you know, we earn our money and, and, our, yeah. and, and uh, you know, and, and we need to use it to its best capacity. So I absolutely yes. get the fact that people have, you know, that it's a, uh, a thought process and it needs yeah. to be a thought process to pay for the for, for the course co course because you know it, it's it's an investment in you yeah. so yeah. you know in one sort of sense it's um it's what you choose to spend your money on yes at the same point in time i th- would say that we do offer payment plans we do you know yep. um i i certainly do um because you know you can sort of put it over sort of you know the course goes over a month so you can get it over more than one pay yeah uh, pay packet um I do know that actually we are always open to have a conversation about yes. it if somebody yes. somebody says look you know I'd like to do the course with you but uh, uh but it's going to take me six months to yeah. to get the money but it's like well let's start after three months yes. and let's agree Yes. Let's let's agree what you what you can put forward for it. But yeah. I think you know once you kind of also put into the perspective the fact that you may have done EMDR. I mean, I did. Mm. I can't. I must have spent and not just of my money at the time because this is years ago. So it would be my parents' money as well. Yes. So this that shows you how long ago it is. I must have spent ten plus ten. Yes. 15 grand yes. probably yes. on yes um and it wasn't until i hit thrive that somebody actually said oh it's a skill set i'm perfectly yeah. happy to pay for a skill set yes because i know <laughs> at the end of it i'm going to have that skill set it's going to be in my hands it's not going to be in the hands there of somebody who yes. i thought was fixing me yes so in one sort of in one sort of sense you know sort of what i charge my clients now versus what I paid and if you have paid for a lot of therapy before mm. I can understand the uh the the, the worry yeah the reluctance yeah 100%. Um, but I would just say I would just say look at testimonials look at yeah. the fact that it's a different kind of program look at the fact that you come you come away with the skills yes um so it's a little bit like going out and buying a car and having that car afterwards yes yes rather than you know giving money away to some sort of service yes that's yes that your money goes to um yes but it is a considered yeah. purchase and, and rightfully so and that's why yeah. you have the free ic at the beginning yeah. because yeah. if you decide that you don't want to work with that person or actually you can you want to try to do the manual yourself in advance mm-hmm. of perhaps spending that money um we'd be all for that and we would absolutely we would support what you wanted to do absolutely absolutely fabulous right have you got any Thing that you would like to say to anybody on the fence about Thrive in general, about coaching, have you got any any words of wisdom from all of your years of experience <laughs> of <laughs> working with words clients? Words of wisdom. Um, <laughs> uh, um, yes, I think um, I think uh, something that that kept me going and you know and and Thrive was definitely what, what turned around my mental health was the idea that I think when you've tried lots of things before. Or um, you're 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 not quite bought into something because you don't quite know it. You, you've not got maybe a friend that's done it or a word of mouth yeah. thing or something like that. That the funny thing is, you're only one decision away from curing yourself. Yes. Um, yes. You know, if I'd have done, I did CBT. I did some pills. I did talking yeah. therapy. I did. I did yep. Somebody talk, Somebody made me write to my inner child at one point in time. Yep. Uh, I didn't believe that one. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, I, I kept going, I kept going, I kept going, and yeah. I persisted. Yep. And it was it was making that next call. Yes. Because yes. That, 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 that turned it all around, that changed my life. So I would say, um, don't let the past dictate mm. your future yes. choice. You yes. know, have a chat with us. At the very least, it's a free chat. Yep. Yep. None of us are here saying that you have to sign up afterwards, yep. but at least you'll get more information and you might get... Yes. A bit of fun and a bit of laughs in on between. A bit Absolutely. More information. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for coming on today, Fiona. It's been a pleasure. No problem. It's been lovely to see you, Michelle. <laughs>